So when we're unauthenticated, we don't have any token saved, we don't have any cookies saved, I mean, and we log in and we're given a cookie and our profile is successfully fetched from the JSON placeholder API, if we refresh, we will, using our token, the signed cookie, the value on the signed cookie, we're able to persist our user's session so we can continue fetching their profile data. It's also important to note that if we remove this token and we reload the page, our session's gone and we won't be able to fetch that user's profile anymore, which should be the case. And we'll handle this problem that we're getting, the error that we're getting in our console as a result in the future. But now, for now, let's take care of improving our login form a bit. So we'll head back to our login form component. So we're handling the success case well in the then statement, but we're not catching any errors. We're just going to have an unhandled error if we don't catch it using some function. So then catch, we need to pass the error to a function which is going to, for example, display the error to our user. So a good place to display the error that we're getting back from our server would be still within our form but underneath our button. So we'll create a div where our error is going to be, and we'll show this conditionally, of course. We'll add an error property to our state, which will just be an empty string, and when we submit our form, we'll begin by clearing any error, so we'll say this.setState, we'll set error to an empty string, so regardless of if we've had an error before, it'll be removed, which will ensure that we'll always see a fresh error. Then in our catch, we'll reference a new function called show error. So we'll add this above render, and show error will take the error argument, the error that's being passed in catch. And first of all, we can say console.error and pass the error to the console, but we also want to set the error property in state. And from our server, our error is going to be either on the property response.data, but we first need to make sure that we have error.response. So we'll use the and conditional if we have error.response, if this returns true, then we can try to access the data property because otherwise it might be on a message property. So we'll use this conditional to set a error variable and then say this.setState and pass the error to our state. Now with that error being put in state, we can within our render destructure the error property and conditionally show it. So with a conditional and and conditional say, if we have an error, then we're going to show the error string, or the error message, I should say. Now we'll save that, and we'll provide an invalid password, and hit submit. So good, we're getting back our error message. It's coming from our server, invalid email or password. And then we're getting our 403 status code still logged, but now it's being handled. We won't get an uncaught error message. An error message saying that our error is uncaught or unhandled. And one additional thing we can do, if we provide an invalid email, we can also, to ensure that this isn't clicked multiple times while it's submitting, because right now we can submit this multiple times and get multiple error messages. And we don't want to be able to send off more than one request while we're, while we're in the process of submitting this form data. What we can do is, when we know we're loading or sending the form data, we can disable the button. So when we start submitting our data, we can add or we can set state, we can set a is loading property of state to true. So we'll create is loading in our state object set by default to false. And then within show error, in addition to setting the error message, we'll say is loading is false there too because 
If we're catching an error, that means our promise has resolved. It's failed, but all the same, it's still resolved and loading should be set to false. Then from the state object, we can destructure is loading, head down to our button, and to disabled, we can pass is loading. So when is loading is true, the button's disabled. And additionally, as one other piece of information that our users have to go off of, we can change the text in the button instead of relying on their ability to see that the button's disabled. We'll add a conditional for our button text saying if we're loading, we'll give the button the text sending, otherwise the normal submit text. So we'll save and try this out. Let's provide an invalid email. You can see our button's disabled. We can click all we want, but we still only get one message and we get our error message. And then we can still, with a valid email and password, hit submit. The button's disabled there too. Oops, I forgot to reload. We hit submit, button's disabled and we're redirected and still able to get that user's profile data. <laughs>